Do you take any prescription medications or anything like that? What do you take? Friends, today's wanker is Matthew Lahowski. Now, before I play the interrogation, let me tell you what he did. In February 2014, in Florida, he attacked his mother from behind. He placed her in a chokehold. He then used a box cutter to cut her throat. He then used a sledgehammer and threw her in the backyard. In this video, he explains why he did it. Now, once this interrogation is finished, I have another one for you. It's an ongoing case I covered a few years ago about a father murdering his child. So stay tuned for that. Forgive me for the quality of Edward's interrogation. It's clear it was filmed during the 1800s when Cornelius Vanderbilt was building railroads. Have you been doing any drinking or drugs today at all? Or? Yeah, I drank afterwards. Afterwards? Tell me about that. Get on water. Okay. Right. Well, we appreciate it. We just got to get some ducks in a row, a lot of moving parts here. Um, so, you know, take us through what's going on. You know, uh, I understand that you were living at the house with, with is it your, your child mm-hmm. and your mother. Okay. Um, what's going on? with my mother all my life. It was I understand it's very hard to come live up to her standards. She's been very hard on you lately. It's not it's not if you're not first or last. It's you're just last and you get nothing. And <clears throat> there's no appreciation and I understand, you know, you don't get a gold star for getting up in the morning. I mean, that's just what you have to do. But you see the torment passed down onto your child. And eventually, it just... She was no good to your child? She was very good to my child. My mother was a good woman. Okay. She was. And she did... And she did everything. And she gave her life. Not, not in the literal sense of what we're talking about, but she she did. And Why don't you take me back to today? Did you sleep at the house? Yes. Can you tell me about waking up in the morning? We woke up, we took Dick to school, and... What school? Rick Nolan Booth. And is it a daughter, is that correct? That's my daughter, Nick. What's her name? Nick. Nicole. Nicole? Yes. Okay. We took her to school, and normally I catch a ride into work, but... What kind of work do you do? An electrician, mechanic automation machinery. Okay. And today the older gentleman, ex military, he since the accident has been giving me a ride in work, he was not able to go today because he had VA X rays to go to and so <clears throat> mom said, you know, we'll love uh, We'll take Nick in and drop you off. And we're good. Okay. Then what? Then we went to work. Okay. <clears throat> How late did you work till? We worked till about two ish. Last night I got served for my uh, DUI. Like a subpoena? What serve, what were you served? There's a couple of different things that someone can be served with. I don't know. Clear water the police department. But I think like serve court paperwork or yeah. okay, a show in court or something. Yeah, a ticket. You got a ticket, okay. and and it was from last month because when I got in the accident, when they found me, I was dead and blah blah blah. And so when I came out of the hospital and nothing happened, and so they were something like where they caught up with the, yeah, the blood work, work or something, right? Okay. And, and so did, it, did the police officer come by? Or yes. Did, okay. Last night okay. he came by, and, he, and I signed, and 
I went back in to get my license, to surrender my license. Mm -hmm. And when I came back out, he's gone. I don't know if he got a phone, maybe if he got a call. Sure, or an emergency. Right. And, and yeah. he, he was gone. And so today, after work, I went to DMV and I surrendered my driver's license, okay. you know, because... He was right there? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, I, and I, that's not what my mother said I should have done. Hmm. Well, it seems to be that it was the right thing to do. Yeah. And it's always, I don't take the advice. I don't listen to what she did. Okay, now you did it. Now you should call the officer and what and remind him that you know he had to take. I, I mean, he he was on duty. He obviously left for a reason. No, no, no. And it just and it doesn't stop. It never stops. And 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 she does mean to do right, but it, it in the end, you know. How much help is how much harm? And now, it's my understanding that at some point tonight you put Nick into another room. Yeah, I put him. Tell me about that. Well, when we came home, Nick wasn't with us, and and then you know she said she was leaving. Okay. Oh, well, what about now? And she slammed the door and she left. She came back and mom and Nick arrived and then she said, you need to jump on the computer and do SD math. And I said, all right, well, we'll get her on the computer and we'll do SD math. And she says, I'm leaving. And she slammed the door. And I, said, and I walked in the door. I said, where are you going? She said, None of your business. You know, you're worried about your daughter. Always, you know, they went to words. And so I did ST math with her, and, you know, she came home, and I, I tried to quit smoking because I was supposed to quit smoking. And I said, well, listen, so today has been a lot of stress. So I've quit for three days. Yeah. I, I'm going to go get a pack of cigarettes. Well, once again, you know, you don't listen to what I have to say. Go do it if you want. So I walked out of my pack of cigarettes, came back, and said, all right, well, what are we doing? Oh, well, now you decide to... It's just... Um, Sounds rough. I, it's it's not she's she not a bad person she's not and she means well I don't know what happened I, I couldn't take him anymore. I can't live with her holding shit over my head and just, you know, everything I do. I went to, I went to turn in my job. That wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it her way. I Nothing's ever good enough. It's not an excuse. It's no excuse for my behavior. Absolutely not. Well, then what happened? <sighs> Some fucking shitty ass comment. And I never felt that way. Do you remember what she said? No. Not exactly, but it was just some <clears throat> derogatory life statement of being less than. How did that make you feel? It's you said you never felt like that before. Tell me about that. No, it was a derogatory statement, but it somehow it 
<clears throat> touched on that and went outside, and, which I, you know, smoking cigarettes again, you know, after I wasn't supposed to. <sighs> we out front, out back. In the garage. In the garage. I don't know, there's some, something like this, and, and she was uh, just festering, and I don't know what she was on the war path for. And I had asked her a couple times today, what is the problem? What is going on? And, and you know, just always bring up the past and everything that I've done. And I said, well, I was, you know, I've been. It's just never good enough. It's never good enough. And then she corrected my daughter playing her ST math game. And it's like, you know, it's a different format. Just because it's a different format, you know, that's what she's doing on the computer. She's trying to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When will it be good enough? When will... And I don't know. Something snapped. And I, I walked away. Smoked a cigarette. And I came back in. And I was going to say something to her. And she walked outside. And Nick was in the computer room. In the mom's room. Doing a steam math, and I said, How are you doing? I'm doing great, Dad. You look good. I said, Great. Good question. I just talked to my partner who's out of the house. That shirt you're wearing, is that, is that in the tub? Sounds about right. Did you wash up in, you don't remember where you washed up at? Probably in the tub, too. In the tub? Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. Been pretty cooperative. Very, very cooperative. Something you need or want? Yeah. What's that? Too much to ask. I'm sorry? Is it too much to ask? For what? Um, you can ask, and, and depending on what you ask, I can tell you yes, no, maybe. I'll I, 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 I understand. But, I mean, you can't hurt to ask, you know. Can I send that letter? Uh, if if you, you want to, is that the request? Mm -hmm. what, what I'll do is, obviously, i got to do a couple things, and uh, we'll run up by the boss, and we'll see if we can arrange something like that. Obviously, depending on, you know, circumstances, but you've been very cooperative with us, I don't see why it shouldn't. So I'll do my best to see what I can do, okay? Um, you good with water? You need anything else? Can I get a request? Yeah. Can't hurt to ask? No, can't hurt to ask. Well, the worst thing I can tell you is no, right? Cigarette. Um, I'll check on cigarettes. I'm not sure if you can't smoke in a building, but I'll, I'll have to see. Um, once again, I'll check. Yeah, I do. Sure. No, we'll definitely help me find out for you. So give me a couple minutes, all right? Thank you. This is uh, crime scene investigator Walker from the sheriff's office. Um, she's going to help us by taking some photographs of you and, and things like that. Um, so first, um, she'll take photographs of you as you are. And then um, we're going to collect your uh, clothes. And I have something here for you to put on, some new clothes. Okay? Um, so whatever her instructions are as far as how she wants you to stand or what she wants you to do. I'll just kind of. You all right? Just got a couple follow-up questions. I'm going to go into there. was... Uh... Have you been doing any drinking or drugs today at all? Or? Yeah, I drank afterwards. Afterwards? Tell me about that. You don't want to tell me that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm the anxiety because of which. Okay, let's start with what, what were you drinking? I drank a couple of mics. Mics? Hard lemonade? Yes. Were they in the fridge or were they in the no, store? I was, okay, so when you left, did yes. you take your daughter with you? Yes. 
Okay, and you, where'd you go then? We went to the mobile station because she was thirsty and I got kind of mites for me and I ate orange juice for her. Okay. How many mites did they? Two. Two? Anything else? No. Do you take any prescription medications or anything like that? What do you take? Uh, Lexco and Trazodone. And what's that for? Lexco is for depression and Trazodone is to sleep. Okay. Well, did you take any of those today? You know, last night. Last night? Okay. Um, and then after mobile, where do you go? We went to Adam Scott and we threw the money. And okay. And How much money did you take out? Uh, whatever the maximum was. Okay. Does it sound like 600? Is that accurate? Yeah, five, 600. Okay. Um, and you use the cards that you have there in your mom's name? Yeah, cards and nothing. There's money on both accounts. Okay. There's plenty of money on both accounts. The card you use uh, only had your mom's name on it. Are you on that account as well? We're on each other's accounts. Okay. We both have the USA and cards. Okay. So if I, yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, and you you took out 600. That's what the receipt says. Okay. You gave 500 to for your daughter, right? Yeah. What was the other 100 for? Do you have a plan, or are you going to stop anywhere else? Or? No, it's a, it's a I mean, why not give her the full 600? No. Okay. Um, Did you guys still have it on me? Yeah, you saw some money on you. Okay. A little, a little over a hundred bucks. Okay, no. Okay. No, I'm just wondering if you had it. After you left Amscott, you went to your exes? Yes. And then, uh, where'd you go after that? You stop anywhere else? Stop at the gas station. For what? To figure out what I was going to do, what I was going to run. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're being honest here. That's why you still hung out with some of the money we thought about maybe trying to run. Short lived? I mean, obviously, it's thought, you know. It's a thought. Did you, did you have any idea what you might think about doing? No. Did you think you could get away with this? No. It's like you. Okay. Well, there. But sure. You know. I mean, you tried to do the right thing. You knew the sheriff's department was there. And when you were waiting at the second gas station, thinking about what to do, what were your thoughts? Did you think you could get away? No, I didn't. I mean, I know better than I do. Does your mom work? No. No. Would anyone have noticed if she was missing? Yes. Who? Everyone. Everyone is a social butterfly. She's got friends. Oh, yes. You do have siblings, correct? Yes. Are they in local? No. Where are they out of? Um, I have a sister. She's in Virgin. Yeah. Are you close with her? No. Is your mom close with her? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you have anybody other than just your sister? Yeah. <clears throat> what about your mom? Does she got anybody else close? Does she have siblings? Yes. How many siblings does she have? Five brothers and sisters. She calls with them? Yes. Any of the local down here? No. Well, you have to understand there's obviously there's media attention. So, you know, they come out to the house and they can news reports, stuff like that, when they know when something's going on. Um, you know, we don't want your family to have to see this in the paper or in the news. Can we, is there someone we should talk to about this? Yeah. We only have a phone number for him. We don't want to call him with this type of news. It's not a good way to. Anybody else closer? You can call my father. My father is. He's what? There's no telling that many for two years. How long have they been apart? Uh, this year will be ten years. Does he yeah. still have contact with his, your sister? Yes. Uh, she did, yes. Yes. 
that's what we're still here trying to figure out. We got we got a few things to figure out. It's a little complicated with a seven year old. Um, who had legal custody of your, of your seven year old? Me. Was it ever your mom? No. Okay. So we're, we're trying to figure out exactly the legal parameters of that. The Department of Children and Family Services is going to get involved here, and in all intent and purposes, if you requested that she stays with your ex, whom she lived with for two years, you know that's, that's definitely an option for us. So we still got to work that out. Um, so that's what we're working out. When we're, when we're all done with that. We'll come in here and tell you what the deciding factor is and what's going to happen. Ultimately, if you're, if you're getting to what's next for you, you'll be booked into Pinellas County Jail and you'll start that process. So that's the end of interview number one. In 2015, Matthew was sentenced to life in prison. The reason why he attacked his mother, because she was just really mean. It's clear the relationship was fractious. Fine, we all have fractured relationships, but he lashed out because he couldn't take it anymore. She made him feel like a piece of shit, and he did the unthinkable. Classless bastard. You think that if you were in my position and you 100% didn't believe I that, would want to know. that you would do this? 100%? You saw the pictures of your baby's head. 100%? You saw the pictures don't of your child's head. And I 100% don't believe it. Okay, this interrogation was back in January 2009. I'm going to continue playing it for you and give you some analysis, but let me quickly give you the context and some background story. Christian Allison is being interrogated by Alaskan State Police regarding the death of her daughter, Jocelyn. Now, her daughter, Jocelyn, who was around 15 months at the time, died of blunt force trauma. The father is Clayton Allison, who was judged to have killed her. During the incident, Christian was not at home, it is said Clayton left the baby gate open and Jocelyn fell down the stairs. Point in the investigation where either you're on the side of Jocelyn or you're on the side of Clayton. Don't say that. That's where we you're are. You're putting yourself. I'm putting myself where? You're putting yourself in a position saying that they automatically want me to be angry with you. So don't do that, please. You can, you. Because I want to be cooperative, I want to be helpful. But do not make a woman stand between her husband and her daughter. Well, you have because. to choose. No, I don't. Okay. I can just Here's as equally love my daughter and believe that it was an accident. Okay, the first thing I noticed, you see how she says, don't do that? Very slowly with her hands. This is a normal reaction when you don't want someone to do something. But the manner in which she did it suggests she is calm. She knows she has nothing to hide. Have a look at her leg positions. She's relaxed. She's comfortable. She's kind of like leaning on the chair, right? She's not stiff. She's not upright. Her head isn't hunched over like some people in an interrogation. Christiane, right now, is the coolest person in the room. Okay, well, it's As not a, it's a homicide. No, it's, it's, we're investigating a homicide according to the evidence that they had. It's, it's ruled a homicide due, based on the injuries that your child had. She went right. from this, okay, to this. She has bruises all over her head. This is trauma. There was no skull fractures on the baby. It was all inside. It was all shaken. She was shaken. She was thrown on the couch. She wasn't hit up against the wall because there are no outward outward bruises that we could see. There's there's nothing on that one. Okay, this is all trauma. You you need to know that this. That shows her face. Can you please not show me that? CJ. Or at least don't show me her face this mutilated is, like that. Okay, so earlier I said there's more to this story. Now's the perfect time for that. So, when Jocelyn fell down the stairs, when they saw her body, her brain can be seen, her skull is completely fractured, her face is unrecognizable, so to speak. You understand what I'm trying to say. The police officer is telling Christiane these injuries are not consistent with just a random falling down the stairs. I'm asking you to help us. We need an answer. I am willing to answer any question you want me to answer. Honestly, I don't know what you expect of me. I don't know if you expect me to walk in this door, if you would tell me that, for me to break down crying and say, oh, it's all a farce. I've been completely truthful for you, to you this Nobody's entire you time. I'm going to be completely truthful to you the rest of the whole thing, the way that this goes. And I'm being co completely cooperative, and I always have been. Okay. Well, here's, here's what we want you so to do. So ask your questions, and I'll give here, you your answer. Here's what we want you to do. 
Okay, we want you to make a phone call to Clayton and we want you to let us record it. That's what that's what we want you to do. And what am I supposed to do in this phone call? Um, you're, you're supposed to, you're going to um, talk to him. Okay, you're going to, you're going to say, if Earl did a homicide, you were the last one with Jocelyn, what happened? She didn't, they're telling me she didn't get the injuries from falling down the stairs. What happened? I'm not going to do that. Okay, and I'm going to ask you why. Because... I am the type of person that would feel like I was lying to okay. One of the key pieces of information that I'll give you now. Christiane, in 2009 and during this investigation, she was diagnosed with type 3 Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's a genetic condition that affects connective tissue. Essentially, her body is more susceptible to dislocations, broken bones, etc, etc, because she has a fragile genetic disorder. In her mind, this could be the explanation for the severity of the injuries to her daughter. But what key here is this diagnosis was given after her husband was arrested and during the investigation. So it is not something she could have brought up during this interrogation as the diagnosis was done after. My husband, if I didn't automatically say this, this phone call is being recorded. If you let me say that, I'll do that just fine. Well, he's not going to talk on a recording, right? He's not going to tell you the truth. He hasn't told you the truth, I'm, no. I'm a truthful person, and that's deceitful to me, and I won't do that to my husband. It's not, it's not dece deceitful. It's this is deceptive. where you have to. This is where you have to. It's deceptive. And okay, and you want it. answers? Do you want answers? Do yeah. you want to know if Clayton did this? Yeah, I do, and I'm going to ask him. And I can ask him if I tell him that it's recorded, and I'll let you record anything you want, or I'll ask him at home by myself. I was just going to... I'm here to see how cooperative you are, and you're not. I am cooperative. I'm I'm telling you a legitimate reason. I will not uh, okay. be deceptive I'm to my you, spouse. I'm telling you that your child did not die from falling down the stairs. Do you think that if you were in my position and you 100% didn't believe I that, would want to know. that you would do this? 100%. You saw the pictures of your baby. 100%. You saw the pictures don't of your child. It. And head. I 100% don't believe it. When? Jocelyn went in for the emergency surgery. Um, they opened up, um, they opened up her, her um, skull, and the dura was very tense, and of course it was bulging, and it popped. You know, like uh, what do you call those? The poppy dose things. So it was. There was so much trauma there. Yeah, I remember the surgeon described it to me beautifully. Okay. Why so are if you I don't agree to this, what do you do? Well, well, if you don't agree to it, you don't agree to it. And the only thing left is we go and we talk to Clayton. Well, that's probably where we're at because honest, I'm just going to be flat honest with you. Even if I 100% believe that he'd done it, which I don't. Mm -hmm. I still couldn't do that. I, to me, there is deceitful and there is not deceitful, and that is deceptive to me, and I cannot do that to my husband. I can't. I couldn't do that to my friend when she was my husband. And I'm you just know, not that kind of person. No, let me just be blunt. Let me just be blunt with you because that's all right. Do you have any part? Did you ever shake Jocelyn? Did you ever throw her in your bed out of out of out of frustration? No. Okay. What's your part in this? What's your part in Jocelyn's death? Nothing. Except for not being there. What's your obligation to Jocelyn now? That's your only obligation? You could make the argument that she's lacking in remorse as she hasn't shown any over hysterical grief or emotions but the incident did take place a month or two before this interrogation and the officers have calmed down a little bit because at this stage unbeknownst to Christiane they have made contact with her husband. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked I will tell you I'm shocked I can't believe as a mother 
after everything that I've presented in front of you, you can say, he didn't do this. You can say, he didn't do this. Let me ask you straight out, did you love Jocelyn? Yeah, I loved him more than anything in the world, and I still do. More than anything in the world? More than anything? Yeah. But you won't. You, you, you're a smart lady. I've given yeah, you I'm everything. Yeah, I'm a smart lady. I've given you everything. And you said you don't even believe you. Zero percent. You don't, there's no, there's not even I'm an ounce of doubt in you. I'm not don't saying Don't tell doubt. me. Don't tell me that you loved your baby with an ounce of doubt. Beyond. I'm not saying beyond. there's not an ounce of doubt. Yeah. I'm saying I don't believe what you're telling me zero percent because I'm not going to say that I do. I'm saying, I'm not saying that I don't doubt things. I doubt lots of As things. As a mother. I doubt lots more than the world. of things. Let me use your that words. That doesn't mean that I want to world. agree with more what you're telling world. me now. You love Jocelyn more than you love your own life, right? Yeah. My God, that's what I would do for my kid. You love Jocelyn more than you love your own life, more than you love anything, above anything else on, on this, on God's green earth. You yeah. love Jocelyn. Yeah. I've presented experts. Experts, evidence, experts. And you're telling me he didn't do it. You do didn't you, love Jocelyn. Do you just, do you just absorb you. everything that everyone sends to I you as 100% truth? No, I take it you in. You take it with a grain of salt, and that is what I'm doing. I'm taking every word you say, everything that's on this mm -hmm. paper, with a grain of salt. I don't believe anything until I've thought about it, I've prayed about it, and I've come to my decision. Because life is too short for rash decisions. It was too short for Jocelyn. Yeah, it was only 15 months. It was hella months. too short. It was only 15 months and her own father, at the hands of her own father, shook her to death. And by God, her mother so doesn't want to know the truth. Me. Her mother doesn't want to know yes, the truth. Yes, I do. And don't you dare say that I don't. Make the phone call. I'll make the phone call if I can tell him it's being recorded. There's a big difference between wanting to know the truth when you believe you can get it 100%, like I said before, you make every decision Excuses. in life based on your decisions, based on your beliefs, based on the knowledge you have Excuses. in front of you. And, and you're being and contradictory. this is the knowledge I have in front of me. No, I am not. You are being contradictory. I have not contradicted myself yet. You I have said, this is where I stand on it, and I'm not changing my mind. Yeah, but then you've fluctuated between whether you, you, you believe him, you believe him, you believe him. He said she fell down the stairs. I'm just going to believe that. I'm just going to believe that. I've presented experts. Experts that said... So how have I fluctuated? That this hasn't happened. How because have I fluctuated? You, because you've said you wanted to know. Because you've said... I do that want to know, and person. I will know. I will find out. I have no fear of that. I don't have to make a phone call in your office on a recorded line to find that out for myself. Like you said, if he's going to lie to me, he's going to lie to me. It's not going to make a difference whether I'm talking on your phone or not. Mm -hmm. If he's going to tell me the truth, he's going to tell me the truth. If the truth is not what you say it is, the truth is not what you say it is. The truth is what it is, what it is. There is no other truth. Right, so that's the end of the interrogation. Let me now give you a timeline of everything that happened because there was quite a lot, right? So in 2015, initially, Clayton Allison by Judge Vanessa White was sentenced to 30 years behind bars, right? Um, he received a 40-year sentence with 10 years suspended meaning he could still be forced to serve them in the event of a probation or parole violation. Um, some of the quotes from this case, the defendant has made a number of objections to the factual assertions um, in the pre-sentence report. Most of those factual assertions are not material in the court sentencing decision and will not be relevant to the parole board. So the condition EDS was not allowed to be submitted into evidence, which was key because they claimed that that's the reason why the um, the poor girl died. Um, if we go to Dr. Turner, who was um, who did the psychological evaluation, the court is of similar opinion to Dr. Turner. Something happened to cause this otherwise passive and patient man to kill his daughter. The doctor has no idea what occurred, neither does the court. So, 2015, he's convicted. Let's move forward. Now, in 2019, his conviction was actually overturned. If you read, the court ruled that Jocelyn's mother's diagnosis shouldn't have been suppressed by the trial judge. You know, the EDS. The appeals document says there were no eyewitnesses to any physical abuse by Clayton, nor was there any evidence that Clayton had previously abused a child or been suspected of abuse. 
the evidence presented at trial was almost exclusively that Clayton was a loving father who was very involved in a special needs child's care. The testimony related to the child's maternal health history of EDS simultaneously supported um, Clayton's defense theory that the child's death was the result of compounding injuries. So they finally, through the appeal, they allowed the uh, EDS condition, if you like, to be submitted into evidence and the appeals set him free. But of course, he used to be retried. So what happened? Now, due to COVID, the retrial was delayed several times. But in March of 2023, this year, um, the article says, a Palmer jury Tuesday found a Wasilla man whose murder conviction was overturned several years ago, guilty only of criminal negligent homicide, clearing him of murder and manslaughter charges after a lengthy trial. Clayton Allison could be sentenced to up to three years in prison, but has already served more than four years on the previous conviction. So, he's been acquitted of actual murder, and he was found guilty of negligent homicide, and he's already served his time, so he's now free. Prior to this trial, I had never heard of EDS, um, and I know nothing about it. So, with all the evidence, do you think this was the correct decision? Comment, let me know.